One of the hottest topics in electronic engineering today is 3D ICs. For years, I've been hearing that Moore's Law is coming to an end. And today, we're finally making 3D IC designs a reality. But with that reality comes a whole lot of new problems to solve. Just like standard chip design, we need to keep high performance, low power, and area optimization front and center. But with 3D IC chip design, we also need to add warpage, design aggregation, internal stress, stack management, and more verification than ever before. Yeah, it gets messy real fast. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Yes, the challenges for 3D IC design are greater than standard chip design, but they are not insurmountable. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Vinay Patwarden from Cadence Design Systems joins me to discuss the variety of challenges faced by 3D IC designers today and how Cadence's integrated high-capacity Integrity 3D IC platform with its 3D design planning and implementation cockpit Flow Manager and co-design capabilities will not only help you with today's 3D IC design, but tomorrow's as well. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Cadence's Integrity 3D IC platform. Hi, Vinay. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, Vinay, we're talking about a faster, more predictable path to chiplet design closure today. But before we get started, Vinay, what kind of trends in IC design do you see motivating these kinds of chiplet designs today? So, these days we do hear a lot about multi-chiplet designs, and there are a couple of trends that are really driving towards that. So first of all, as we know, Moore's Law has been our guiding principle for designing large processors, large ICs. In recent years, if you see with node shrinks, we are going down to 10, 7, 5, and we have reached 3 nanometers. So we are actually now uh, reaching the physical transistor size limit because we don't know what's beyond 3 nanometer. So there's kind of a slowdown in Moore's Law that has been talked about for a while now, but now it's really, really hitting the transistor size limits and it's quite visible and conspicuous. So our customers thinking about next generation ICs, planning their designs for the next few years, have to look at some new ways to keep that scaling going on. So that's one thing. The other interesting trend that we see is some of these CPU, GPU, or even some of these large designs with multiple repeatable cores for purpose of AI and machine learning are really getting big, big in terms of the die size. Now we know there is a physical reticle size limit dictated by the lithography or techniques that are used today to have a physical reticle size limit of about 853 millimeters square on each die. Some of the recent GPUs, CPUs I've seen are in the range of 700, 750 millimeters square. So getting bigger chips is now going to be really, really hard. And the yield for those chips at those large sizes is also going to to be very low. So it's going to be harder to design big chips to have additional functionality in the coming years. So both these trends are really pushing us in the EDA industry as well as in the chip design industry to come up with more innovative, newer ways of continuing to scale the functionality and keep adding new features onto single dies. Okay, so Vinay, where should we go from here? What kind of approach do you think would help us solve these two issues you mentioned? Right, so one easy natural way that comes to mind that has been explored over the last few years is going to the third dimension. Instead of having a large 2D die, there's always a possibility of stacking chips on top of each other. When you stack chips, what happens is if you have some long wires that go from one end of the chip to the other, then normally there's a lot of loading. You have to do buffering for that wire. And it limits the performance 
you can reach in that kind of design. It limits the amount of power due to the wire length because long wires, there's a switching signal on it. They can consume a lot more power. So an an easy way is to go to the third dimension, uh, make use of the Z direction. So you have a much shorter wire length for some of these long wire length nets. Because of the shorter wire, you'll also have less power. You can push the performance a little bit more because you'll have better timing. If you put memories on top and have a shorter access to those memories from the compute elements, you can have higher memory bandwidth. Overall, the two ICs that you stack on top of each other will have a smaller area, smaller profile. So indirectly, they'll have a better yield as well. So it seems like a very nice and uh, elegant solution to just stack ICs on top of each other to get around some of these trends that we are seeing recently. So Vinay, where does Cadence fit in this arena? So Cadence has been developing a lot of flows and tools almost over the last 20 years for multi-chip modules. So multi-chip packaging is not new. Cadence has had tools in that. What recently has changed in the last 10 years or so is the improvement or the advancements that the foundries have brought in to having silicon interposers or the RDL interposers that connect multiple chiplets together, not just at the packaging level, but actually pieces of silicon that can be stacked on top of each other. So things like ultra high density uh, RDLs or uh, bumpless 3D integration is now what foundries are talking about. And Cadence has had a very strong presence in the packaging world. We have had tools for PCB package design, the package integration. And recently, we've we've had uh, tools for doing implementation of analog as well as digital ICs. So as a packaging leader, we do have some of these tools. But now, uh, since we are moving towards more of a 3D integration that's offered by the foundries, Cadence, I think, is in a strong position to combine all this technology together in order to offer a more integrated solution for this kind of 3D stacking and 3D IC multi-chiplet design. So, Vinay, what kind of challenges are we talking about here? It seems like there would be some additional management and verification to deal with in these types of designs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's easier said than done. Um, I mean, when I put it simply, I just stack two chips on top of each other. Uh, I'm sure there are engineers listening to this podcast rolling their eyes saying, oh, only if it were that simple. There are multiple things that you have to do when you're stacking chips. So first of all, you have to plan and design the whole 3D stack in terms of the positions and what goes on top, whether it's a face-to-face, face-to-back, what kind of stacking are you defining? You have to do some design aggregation at the top level. You have to make sure that the bump connections or the connections that go from one die to other are all aligned and follow certain physical as well as electrical rules that are set by the foundry. These different chiplets can be in different technology nodes. So there has to be a way from an EDA point of view to represent all of this in a database where multiple technologies can be looked at at the same time. And then you mentioned about verification. So there are definitely additional checks that need to be done. Once the system is constructed and it's built, now it's no more just a 2D chip. There are considerations for things like thermal dissipation, mechanical warpage, EMI, or inter-die connectivity through uh, LVS or DRC checking that has to be done on top of the standard timing power reliability checks that you do for 2D designs. There is certainly a lot more verification checking that has to be done. One other key piece is when you are doing this kind of a 3D design, it's very important to have early feedback of what the system analysis is going to look like. So you can try multiple what-if scenarios and change the location or the configuration of the whole system that you're trying to build. Now, Vinay, the issues you just mentioned seem quite difficult. What is Cadence in particular doing to address them? We at Cadence have been thinking about this for the last couple of years as it's trending more and more. And we have been working with our close partner customers to come up with a more integrated, elegant solution. 
So recently, we announced a new 3DIC design and analysis platform called Integrity 3DIC. It is an integrated 3D design planning and implementation platform, which can do comprehensive system modeling, planning, implementation, and it has an access to all the analysis tool. It has early access, so we can do early analysis for thermal, power, SDA, and then uh, bring all those results early in the design cycle, because of which we can then do an efficient 3D design flow for constructing the whole system and verifying it uh, seamlessly. Now, this new 3D IC is part of the Cadence Integrity platform, which we previously covered here at EE Journal. But, Vinay, this platform has changed over the years, right? That's right. So, the Cadence Integrity 3D IC platform is the new platform that's available now. 3D IC design has been going on for the last few years, and it was possible to do that using a die by die approach. You do single die at a time, and Cadence has the full tool set for doing that. We have tools for aggregating the system, for doing implementation in different platforms, and then doing all the analysis. Cadence does have a strong suite of analysis tools for thermal analysis, SDA, power, and all that. But they were all still point tools, which involved a lot of file passing from one to the other, causing inefficiencies and human and machine errors. What we really did with this Integrity 3D IC platform is we have created a unified platform around a unified database where All of these individual point tools are uh, put on top of the platform. They talk to each other seamlessly through the integrity database and exchange any information that's needed for certain types of analysis. For example, timing analysis will need some kind of a delay calculation file, uh, extraction out of both of the ICs if you're stacking two ICs. All that will be in a central place. Now, thermal analysis will need switching data, power data, material data. All that, again, will be in the same central place. So we have brought all that together in an integrated platform. And what it enables us is to really lay the foundation for the next generation of 3D designs uh, that are coming down the pipe, which will need things like cross-die optimization or um, cross-die partitioning and placement and all kinds of speciality routing for the connection to the package. And not just that, when they are mounted on the package and that's mounted on the board, all kinds of bump alignment, everything will be possible through this one single integrated platform. So, Vinay, what does all of this Integrity 3D IC platform include? It has a lot of things, but let me break it down into four separate pieces. So the first piece is the design planning and implementation cockpit. There's a piece called the system planner where you can actually plan the whole system. You can do different configurations of the system, flip the face of the dies around, or the the way you stack them on top of each other can be changed, and then implement each die in that system. The second piece is the co-design. So if you have some of the dies, let's say they are analog type of dies that are stacked on top of a digital die, Virtuoso platform is really the platform of choice for analog designs. So it can be done in uh, Virtuoso and then it can be stacked on top of the digital die. Similarly for package design, we have our Allegro technology, which can do package layouts. So you can do that in package, and as a part of the core design flow, you can bring in the whole package file inside the integrity platform and design your dies on top of the existing package layout that you've gotten from Allegro. Third piece is the flow manager. Flow manager guides you through different analysis flows that are needed for this kind of 3D design. So for example, thermal, power, timing, DRC, LVS, We have the common flow manager, which will have the same look and feel for setting up different types of analyses. So, you know, in your whole 3D design and verification cycle, what all are the steps that you need to go through? And you can set up those individual analysis over there in the flow manager. And at the center of it is really this integrity uh, platform uh, database, which is a multi-technology database, which is a key innovation. Normally, one technology left can be supported at a time. But over here, we can have multiple technologies in the database represented for doing the full stack design. 
So those are really the key four pieces of the Integrity 3D IC platform. Excellent. Now, Vinay, I'm also interested in that system planner you mentioned. Can you give me some more details on that part of the platform? Absolutely. So the system planner is really at the front end side where you are planning the whole system, where you're doing stack management for system level connectivity. What it gives you is a way to represent all the components in your 3D design. So you might have a couple of dies and a layer of interposer. Uh, you may have a third party die, an HBM or something that you are getting from an IP provider. There may be a package BGA-LGA design at the bottom. The relative location of each other can be decided in the system planner. You can get a complete system level view of the connections. Uh, where do each pieces and each pins connect based on their term map files? And it gives you a full connectivity from chiplet to package to board for the full entire system. On top of that, it also can store in the integrity database these configurations. So any inputs that are needed for downstream connectivity verification or interface alignment checking, all that information is now available in the database that has been saved by the system planner. So it's a very powerful technology for deciding the final configuration of your system, which is integrated with the central database. Now... Vinay, can we also get into the stack management a bit as well? Yes. 3DIC means different things to different people. For some, it's just 2.5D interposer-based designs, but there are a few of our customers that we are talking to where an automated full 3D stacking flow is what they're really interested in. So what that involves is taking a 2D design and intelligently partitioning it in such a way that it can be converted from a 2D to a 3D stack. Now, there are multiple ways of separating out components of a 2D design. And one really popular method that we have seen through research and through paper presentations that have been done at some of these conferences is a memory on logic stack. So if you can take an original 2D floor plan of a high-performance CPU or one of these industry standard cores, you separate out the memories, put them on the top die, and put all the logic on the bottom die. That is a very efficient and meaningful configuration that some of our research teams in the industry have done research on and proven that this kind of configuration can push frequency for a high-performance core. It can help with lowering the power and the area cost, and you can even have those memories and logic in different technology nodes. So it really addresses the memory wall limitation that's a part of the Moore's law, where uh, the memory latency as opposed to the execution engine is really what limits the performance of a high-performance processor. So with this automated partitioning, it's possible to do this memory on logic configuration that is very efficient. Now, the difficulty comes on how do you separate out those memories or how do you define the paths and how do you close timing of such a system? So what we have in our Integrity 3D IC flow is a way to do native 3D partitioning. You start with the original 2D netlist existing floor plan that has been implemented. We have this technology called mixed placement for 3D designs where we separate out the macros, we separate out the standard cells, and we lay on top of each other and we unfold the floor plan to give you a faster, efficient system with two dies, but with higher performance, lower wire length, lower power, smaller area. So it's an exploration flow for 3D stacking, but it's something unique that we think is going to be of tremendous value to customers who are trying this kind of approach. Excellent. Now, Vinay, how does this new platform work with the other Cadence platforms? Yeah, so this platform is primarily built on top of our digital platform, which was Innovus. So Integrity 3D IC, uh, we leverage some of the high capacity benefits that we have from our digital implementation platform, which is Innovus through our different methods to exchange data between different platforms like 
open access or the MCM file format. It's possible to do co-design with other platforms uh, using Integrity 3DIC. So these co-design capabilities are something that were key because uh, of the range of customers that we support and the range of customers that are trying to do this 3DIC. It was very important to have a seamless data exchange between other formats. So with our central platform database, it is quite seamless and possible to exchange data between the different uh, platforms that Cadence has today. So Vinay, can we take a closer look at the Celsius thermal analysis? What does that look like? Yes. So as I mentioned, one of the key additional verification that's needed for 3D IC designs is the thermal checks. And I focused on that because that is really something that a 3D IC system cannot be completed without. Now, Cadence has this thermal analysis tool called Celsius. Uh, It uses a combination of FEA, finite element analysis, and CFD, the computational fluid dynamics, does a much more predictable temperature calculation, a much more realistic and accurate temperature calculation for different systems. So what we have enabled through Integrity 3D IC is an early access to Celsius. It can model the whole system based on the switching information that it gets from our power analysis tool, Voltus. Voltus can analyze the die and the package together, including the load that's offered by the package. Some of that switching information is given to Celsius through a current model. And Celsius then calculates the temperature based on the switching activity. It's very important because when you're stacking dyes, you don't want to stack things that are switching at the same time on top of each other. So based on the feedback you get from thermal analysis, you may want to change the logic on one of the dyes or change the location of the logic on one of the dyes. So we do have a way to model the whole design stack look at the power dissipation, look at what materials that are used and model them correctly and get an accurate spread of the temperature on how it's going to affect the whole system when the dyes are stacked on top of each other. So Vinay, can this Celsius tool also deal with warpage and internal stress in the 3D IC? Yes. So as a result of heating of some of these dyes, what can happen is there can be a bending of the material and that has to be accurately modeled. So Celsius can actually do a thermal mechanical co-simulation of the whole 3D stack under operation. And then it, uh, for a certain range of temperature, it can show what the maximum warpage on a big interposer layer can be. So based on that, You can decide the location of the multiple chiplets and make refinements to your design. Now, earlier you mentioned static timing analysis using the Tempest platform. So, Vinay, what does this buy me in terms of these new 3D ICs? Static timing is one of the most important checks. Now, when you are doing timing that goes through multiple dies that we time flop to flop or mem to reg, the standard timing checks, when you're stacking the dies, the number of corners that you have to run full sign off on can be really, really high. For example, some of these advanced process nodes, if you're making a stack configuration with a five nanometer die or a three nanometer die, Some of the process corners, then certain temperature corners that normally you run, but in a 3D IC configuration based on the thermal feedback, the number of temperature corners can be large. So sometimes you may end up having more than 2,000 or 3,000 sign-off corners, and it's just impractical to handle those many with the standard technology that we have. It's really a problem for which we had to come up with some new technology. So what we have as a part of our Tempest timing analysis technology, we have developed a solution which consists of multiple parts. So one is die level hierarchical abstraction to reduce the amount of data by creating boundary models. Also, since there is so much data, we make use of the concurrent multi-mode, multi-corner capability, which simplify job management and machine resources, and we can fan it out on a multiple CPUs. But the most important new thing that we have developed for 3D ICs is this rapid automated inter analysis, 
which significantly reduces the corner data. It does some kind of a smart reduction of corners and looks at all the data and figures out what is really the key optimal set that's needed. And it can bring down the runtime for handling such a large amount of corners by almost 10x runtime reduction is what we are seeing in some of the designs that we have run with this. And we do have a very detailed white paper on this technology on our website. So PPA is a common theme here on Chalk Talk. How does this new platform address PPA? Yes. So ultimately, whether we are doing a 2D design or 3D design, it is very important to make it optimal in terms of high performance. It should have the lowest power and the best area so that it's manufacturable So what we are really trying to do with this integrated system is through early system feedback, through all the integration, we are trying to optimize the individual ICs that make up the stack through either smart native partitioning or by getting system level feedback early. And that's why we are calling it system-driven PPA, where the ultimate goal of getting all this early analysis feedback and verification feedback is to make the layers of the 3D stack as optimal as we can based on the PPA. So any decisions that we make while designing the system are based on the early feedback we get so that the two or three chips that are in the 3D IC system stack have the best power performance and area and it, there's no wastage. So that's That's the approach of why we are doing this whole integrated platform together, where we can come out with an efficient 3D IC system with the best PPA. Now, Vinay, how have these 3D ICs been received so far? We are sometimes overwhelmed by the amount of interest in this technology. We have most of our top customers looking into this. We are engaged with some of the top hyperscalers who are doing these kind of designs as a part of the announcement. Some early partnerships that we did with some of our customers, uh, the one that we work closely with is iMac to work on some of these 3D partitioning flows where they tried out 3D partitioning flows on a couple of their multi-core CPUs and were able to do automatic partitioning of the memory on logic and they were able to get certain power reduction, certain performance improvement. They presented a paper at our Cadence Live conference where they saw some improvement in some of the high performance cores that they are experimenting this on. Also, we have worked with some of our early customers who are using 3D ICs for optical computing and Lightelligence is one of them, where they were looking for a heterogeneous system with multiple chiplets that are stacked on top of each other, each done in a different platform, and they were all merged together through the Integrity 3D IC database. It's helping them with their next generation innovation that they're using for optical computing for AI acceleration. And then we are also engaged with a lot of customers who are doing 2.5D interposer type of designs for uh, logic ties and high bandwidth memories that are connected on silicon interposer technology. We do have a wide spectrum of 3D IC design styles that are supported by Integrity 3D IC. And we have customers in each category that we have provided the solution for. They've seen some early success and they are designing more complex chips with this technology now. So in summary, no matter what your design style is for 3D IC, the Integrity 3D IC platform can cover all of the permitted 3D design styles that are provided by all of the leading foundries today. Excellent. Well, Vinay, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Yes. 3D IC is trending. Top customers are doing 3D IC designs now and are benefiting from our recently announced Integrity 3D IC design planning and implementation platform. We have a way to do early analysis, which is one of our key benefits, uh, early thermal power and STA analysis as part of the platform. We can support multiple technology nodes and all kinds of 3D IC design styles that are offered by the foundries. And we do have a way to do system-driven PPA to optimize the designs in your 3D stack very efficiently. Excellent. Well, Vinay, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you really for having me. 
And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Cadence Design Systems. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>